Hi, and welcome back to First Year Undergraduate Microeconomics. We're on the topic of welfare economics. In this presentation, we're going to start looking at how we measure gains from trade. Now, remember from our assumption there are four parties who are going to be relevant here. Buyers, sellers, government, anyone else. When we're looking at gains from trade, well, government's going to be easy. The government may get some revenue, for example, if there's a tax in place, or the government may pay some, thing, some money out if there's, for example, a subsidy. So that's going to be how we measure the government's benefit or cost. For anyone else, well, we're going to have to discuss what we mean by the benefits or costs to anyone else. That's for a later lecture. What about for the buyers and sellers? Well, the gains from trade for a buyer are simply going to be the benefit to the buyer of getting the product, less the amount they pay, and the gains to the seller is going to be the amount the seller receives, less their opportunity cost. In this presentation, we're going to start by looking at the buyer. Now, the benefit to the buyer, less the amount the buyer pays. The benefit to the buyer. Remember that in our assumptions, we had two assumptions looking at the buyer. The assumptions were that the buyer has consistent preferences and that we can measure the benefit to the buyer by compensation principles. So in this presentation, we're going to take those compensation principles and show how we can map out a marginal value curve for the buyer. That's going to give us the benefit to the buyer from getting a product. So let's pick our buyer, it's going to be Sarah. Let's pick our homogeneous product, it's going to be apples. And we're going to look at Sarah's marginal value for apples. Suppose that Sarah currently doesn't have any apples. Let's ask, what is Sarah's marginal value of her first apple? So how much does she value the first apple that we give her? And to do that, we're going to use the compensation principle. To do that, we have to ask, what would be the amount of dollars that would just compensate Sarah for not having the apple? Or another way of putting it is, what is the dollar amount that Sarah at most would pay in exchange for that first apple? Let's suppose that the answer to that question is $2. In other words, if we offered Sarah a choice, an apple, or two dollars, she would be indifferent. She wouldn't care. She'd be happy to have the apple. She'd be happy to have the two dollars. She wouldn't mind which of those she chose. The apple is worth exactly two dollars to Sarah. So we can say that Sarah values that first apple at two dollars. Now suppose that we've given Sarah one apple and we want to give her a second one. What is her marginal value of that second apple? We know the first apple was worth $2 for, to her, but she's now already been given that first apple. We want to know how much the second apple is worth. Again, to do that, we're going to use the compensation principle. But now we're going to be asking, given Sarah has one apple, what is the trade-off to Sarah between having a second apple or having a dollar amount? In other words, if we said to Sarah, you can either have the second apple or you can have this amount of money, what is this amount of money that would make her indifferent? Let's suppose that the answer is a dollar twenty, or in other words, the maximum that Sarah would be willing to pay for this second apple, given that she has already got a first apple, is given by $1.20. So her marginal value of the second apple is $1.20. We can keep going. Suppose that we've given Sarah two apples. We can now ask, given that Sarah has got two apples, how much should she be willing to pay at most, or what is the marginal value of a third apple? Let's suppose that the answer to that is a dollar, or in other words, given that she's got two apples already, Sarah is indifferent between taking a third apple or taking one dollar. 
And again, we can keep going. Suppose Sarah has already been given three apples. We can ask the question, given that she's got three apples, what is the marginal valuation to Sarah of a fourth apple? Again, we can use the compensation principle. So for example, we could say to Sarah, you can have the fourth apple or you can have this much money. What is the amount of money that would make her indifferent? Or another way to think about it is, what is the maximum amount of money that Sarah would be willing to pay to get that fourth apple, given she's already got three apples? Let's suppose the answer is 70 cents, so the marginal value to Sarah of her fourth apple, given she's already got three apples, the marginal value of her fourth apple is 70 cents. Now we want to use this information to draw Sarah's marginal value curve for apples. How do we do that? Well, let's draw up some axes. We'll have quantity of apples on the horizontal axis. We'll have dollars on the vertical axis. And we want to ask, for any quantity of apples, what is Sarah's marginal valuation of the last apple? Well, let's start with the first apple we give her. Sarah's marginal value of that first apple was given by $2. If we go to the second apple, remember that Sarah's marginal valuation of that second apple, given that she's already got a first apple, the value of that second apple to her, the value at the margin, was $1.20. Similarly, for the third apple, given that Sarah's already got a first and a second apple, the value to Sarah of having that extra, that third apple, her marginal value, was given by a dollar. And the value to Sarah of her fourth apple, the marginal value of that fourth apple, given that she's already got her first three apples, the marginal value was 70 cents. So we've now drawn up the marginal values of Sarah's first, second, third and fourth apple. And if we join all of those, we get this blue line here, which is Sarah's marginal value curve for apples. Notice that Sarah's marginal value curve for apples tells us, for any quantity, what is the value to Sarah at the margin of the last apple. So for the first apple, if we go up to the marginal value curve, that tells us $2 is the marginal value of her first apple. If we go across to the third apple, we go up to the marginal value curve, her third apple is worth a dollar, and so on. This marginal value curve is going to be able to tell us Sarah's total valuation for any level of apples that we give her. But that's for the next presentation.